Now is the question, how can we treat this disease if the neurons are destroyed? And unfortunately, we have only symptomatic treatment currently because all the other tests of treatment, the vaccination tests and others, were negative and did not result in any treatment. What you see here is a table of drugs from 2008. This table is still valid in 2020 now, and it's still the same drugs. So we did not gain any additional new drugs for treating Alzheimer's disease. And those drugs are just medication to help a little bit here and there. They are not uh, for the cause of the disease. Some drugs were used, like nimotipine, to increase the blood flow of the brain. And we have these four, three choline esterase inhibitors and one NMDA receptor antagonist, which are the current treatment. Choline esterase inhibitors increase acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter in the brain, which is reduced in Alzheimer's disease patients in some nuclei. And NMDA receptor antagonists block the overfunction of certain brain regions which are recruited to compensate for deficiencies in the brain. The patients additionally get other psychiatric problems and can be treated with antipsychotics and neurolepics. And of course, there were different discussions throughout the last years. We could use ginkgo biloba was described and discussed, green tea extracts, for example, also vitamins like E and C to prevent or to treat Alzheimer's disease. So the question is now, which way should we go? What is the reason of the disease and how can we treat this? And in our lab, we investigate different possibilities. One possibility is the waste disposal system of the brain, and another possibility is the activation of the waste disposal system due to medical plants. Many years ago, we started to investigate the waste disposal system of the brain, and this resulted from a research actually in pharmacology. In pharmacology, some of those waste disposal proteins are very important for the treatment of cancer. In the brain, we see those proteins, and we can locate those proteins at the barriers of the brain, at the vessels of the brain. And in the vessels, we see quite a number of transport molecules here in different colors. And those transport molecules are responsible to excrete amyloid beta and also other metabolites from the brain that hamper and destroy brain function. If those proteins are not functioning properly, then this leads to a aggregation or to a storage of those metabolites, metabolic byproducts or proteins in the brain and to the destruction of the brain. That was our hypothesis many years ago, nearly 20 years ago when I started with this research. And we did some investigations in patients at the time, which were published already in 2004. And this investigation showed, indeed, in patients that got old up to 95 years of age, that was the oldest in our study, that those patients have, depending on the function of ABC transporters, different amounts of amyloid in the brain. In those locations where the amyloid beta is low, they have a good function. In those locations where the amyloid beta is high, the function of the transport molecules was very low. But that was only an indirect test, so we wanted to test this in more detail, scientifically, and we used mouse models. It took more than 10 years to investigate this all, but finally, this is a summary of the results. We ended up with this very important and very interesting result to our surprise. Here, you see a bar, which uh, is a measurement of amyloid in the brain of an Alzheimer's disease mouse. If you take out the transporter B1 or the C1 transporter, this amount increases massively to four, nearly 4 and 12 to 14 fold in those mice. So if you have a problem of the function of those ABC transporters, you accumulate amyloid beta in the brain. And this causes, of course, severe problems because that destroys the function of your neurons, that destroys the function of all the brain cells. Those transport molecules can be activated and deactivated. There are some drugs that activate this. Rifampicin, for example, is a drug that is used for the treatment against tuberculosis. But we also have inhibitors like those calcium antagonists or beta blockers that are used for long-term treatment in cardiovascular diseases. What this means for the future of patients that have chronic treatment with this, we do not know. But we know that there is something that we have to have a look at. 
We have published this uh, a while ago and there were some programs in Germany uh, about our research. This is one example um, in a program which is called Visite in Northern Germany, uh, which deals with those findings.